and we don't ask for a registration fee or a membership fee, but we do pass the hat. Well, not literally the hat, but the basket. Um, we do suggest a $3 donation, but that's up to your choosing. So if you feel that you want to give to the program, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. So I'll start the basket along. We have a, a Lunch and Hour Marketing Facebook page and a LinkedIn group. And our website is la2m.org. And on the subject of nonprofits, it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. We have Amanda Yumi from 826 Michigan. And Amanda's going to be talking about marketing to nonprofits, but also how nonprofits market themselves. So a little bit for all of our audience here today. And with that, I'd like you to welcome Amanda. a couple minutes ago that actually I was I'm the first representative of a nonprofit to speak at this and that's incredibly exciting. So um, I'm wondering how many of you all are involved in nonprofits in some way on a board it's like wow. So this is like a good <laughs> this is a good thing to talk about nonprofits. Um, and as you said I am hoping to share with you um, some of the creative and unusual ways that 826 Michigan markets itself and how we do it and pass on some of our tips if they are helpful to you. And then as a person who's been in the nonprofit sector for 10 years or so, I hope that I can share with you some of um, the things that are meaningful to me when I am being marketed to things like that. Um, so another show of hands, how many of you have heard of 826 Michigan? Nice representation. How many of you have heard of or walked past Liberty Street Robot Supply. Did anybody, is this the first introduction for anybody that those are one and the same or connected in some way? A few people, yes. <laughs> uh, we have this kind of cool thing where we um, we run a nonprofit writing tutoring center, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. Um, but then we also uh, run this little retail store. So um, that is one of the key ways that we find a different audience um, than the traditional one you would think of for our work, and we keep ourselves going and sustaining um, our nonprofit stuff. So I'm Amanda Yuli, I'm the executive director. Here's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, in the marketing to nonprofits category, which we're going to cover first, um, this is like the one kind of corporate buzzword that really works for nonprofits: efficiency. It's huge for us. Um, and I'll talk about that, and then um, who doesn't love free stuff? That is a, a big part of how marketing to nonprofits becomes effective. Um, and then when we get to talking about what we do, um, we use some very powerful people to help get our message out. We are very keyed into alliances and social networks, which the other times that I've come to this event, I've heard a lot about social networks, um, and I hope that we have something kind of unique to say about how we're doing that. And then possibly the most important thing I'll talk about is to not be afraid of being weird, or in some cases super weird, um, which we are, we've always been, and we probably always will be, and um, it's okay to be weird. So, I don't know. Does anybody try to be weird in their business? Is that something, a few people? Is anybody afraid of that? You don't have to raise your hand if you're afraid of it. <laughs> you might not want to. Um, before I get into kind of these specific things, I'm just gonna give you a little overview of what we do. Um, so for those of you who had maybe only seen our robot store, you might not know about some of the work that goes on behind the red curtain on that robot store, which is just up the street on Liberty. Um, we serve about 2,000 young people, um, school age, 6 to 18, every year. A whole lot of our work, the majority, is in the Dix Lanning Public School District. So that's right there, kind of a marketing challenge for us. Our location is less than a block from here, up the street, but a lot of our service area winds up being Ypsilanti. Um, we have a very tiny staff and a very massive volunteer base. So um, I'm the executive director. I'm also 50% of the paid staff, so there are two of us. And our volunteer list is really enormous. We have about at this point, 1,250 people on the list for volunteers. Not every single one of those people is engaged every single moment of the year, but we estimate four to 500 are. 
So when you think about if you were making some sort of org chart, there were two of us on staff, and there was a humongous pool of volunteers. And that gets into the powerful people thing I'll talk about in a bit. And then, uh, because our programs are completely, totally free, we need to get really, really creative about how we sustain even a tiny two-person staff in our little space on the Bree Street. Um, so, efficiency. Um, this is a student named Justin who was reading about a week ago at an event that we did at the Michigan Union. We worked in Justin's classroom at Huron High School um, for weeks and weeks and weeks. We had students there write essays about their experience in education, and we had a release party for that little book that we published. Here he is reading it. Um, this kind of stuff is the most important thing that I do every day, and that all of our volunteers and our board and everyone works toward. And so. Anything that sort of distracts me from that is really hard to do. So while we may really desire or really want to be as sophisticated as we possibly can be about our marketing, um, if it's going to take more than just a little bit of energy or time or money, frankly, um, it's going to be really hard for us to do. So um, one example of things that have worked really, really beautifully for us in terms of efficiency is um, we were granted about a year and a half ago a Google grant for AdWords. So we were given this seriously tremendous gift of being able to do to use Google AdWords um, to market our programs. So great. Why why didn't I immediately like drop everything and make that happen? I was busy doing this kind of stuff and raising money and it just sort of didn't happen for a while. Um, However, and the person that made this happen is actually in the room, which is cool. Elise Guilfoyle from Google is here. Elise is one of our uh, former tutors. She spent time, I think, at Heiko Community Center tutoring um, girls and writing, and she knew what we do and why we do it. And she also works at Google in the AdWords department, and she was able to step up and write the AdWords for us, and those are running now. And so that is a way that we are able to use a person that already knows what we're up to and make that actually work for us. So um, thinking about marketing to nonprofits, if you can think about, you can ask yourself if, what, if your product can actually connect up to um, that organization's mission and make that work for them, that's a good match. If, if you're not sure, if you're going to invite them to do something like a webinar or spend a lot of time getting involved, it, it may not work. And so keeping that mission foremost is great. Also with marketing to nonprofits, um, free stuff is huge. So these are just a couple of examples. There's um, a local business that gives us um, free office supplies. Not everything. They give us free paper and free this or that now and then. Well, it makes complete sense that because they're giving free paper to us, when we need to buy something, that's where we go. And when we need to buy something big, like a big fancy stapler to put together our checkbooks or whatever, that's where we go. So it's sort of a gateway and lets that kind of business relationship open. And then the next picture is from an event that we did recently at our brewing company. Our brewing has been a sponsor of ours for various events. And for this, they basically gave us um, the room. They gave free beers to some of the guys that were doing this fundraiser thing for us. And we bought the people. So they were giving away the room rental fee. They were giving away some beer. Probably for every person in the room that got a free beer, there were three people buying beers. Um, and then there was this great buzz about our event, we promoted the event, their logo was on our flyer, etc. So they were giving something away, they really also were getting a benefit from us. And then, um, speaking of free stuff, money is like the ultimate free stuff. So, um, and we, we do work with companies that do sponsorship. So these are a few of our sponsors for our upcoming event in May, Storymakers Dinner. And each of these um, companies, there's a law firm, obviously Borders, um, and then Thompson Shore is a book printer. Um, each of these companies have some reason why connecting up to our audience, which are all those volunteers, the parents of those kids, people who like and appreciate literature and books, um, all of those audiences are a good match for those companies, and so it makes sense for them to give us some money, which they did very generously, and then they get to be part of the event. Um, for an organization like ours, when we're talking about marketing an event, um, we have every reason to market the heck out of those events. And so we know that when we can pair up a business with that, they're going to get some of that same exposure that we get. And um, 
so we have 750 Facebook friends and we have a Twitter feed and we have a website that's very popular and those sponsors are part of that. They also get a chance to come to the event they can bring clients. Um, bringing clients to an event that's a charity thing or a nonprofit thing sometimes has a little more meaning than just taking them out to dinner, which is nice too. But um, there are all these kind of reciprocal benefits that companies can get by sponsoring a nonprofit. And in our case, for this event, there's um, a famous person involved. Dave Eggers is, the, is connected to our organization. He's a famous writer. And so all these companies will get a chance to sort of meet him and be part of that event. And it's something, it's like a benefit that we can offer that wouldn't necessarily be available, um, wouldn't necessarily be for sale, in fact. Um, so the bottom line with marketing to nonprofits is we usually don't have very much money, and that's just to be really, really honest. Our budget at 826 is incredibly slim, and we work every way we can to be efficient with it. Um, but we have also have some really invaluable resources, like those connections to people, um, and our own presence, and our own media relationships and things. And that's kind of what you need to know there. Um, so next I'm going to talk about how we market ourselves. ourselves. Um, this is under the heading of powerful people. So this is Krista Stone, and she perhaps does not look super powerful in this photo. <laughs> she looks like a girl in running shorts, which she is. Um, Krista is running the Big House Big Heart Run for us um, in this photo. And this was, I think, last summer, maybe even the summer before. She's been in a few different years, but um, the, the concept here is that She's a mid-twenties person, volunteers, kind of like Elise has volunteered. She's tutored with our program. She knows what we do. And uh, she wanted to run this race. So she is, has every motivation and every reason to promote that. And she's trying to raise money for us. So there's a benefit right there. But then also, Krista is telling the whole world that she knows that she's running a race for us. And she is able to ask for that money, that donation for us, in a way that um, is incredibly powerful because it's very much connected to her experience with us. So, reaching, we, we've already reached Krista and she already knows what's good about what we're doing, but then when we have a chance for Krista to reach out to 50 or 100 or 500 people that she knows in that way, it really, that makes Krista a powerful person for us. So, this is one example. Um, here's one, uh, this is a tutor and a student at a writing center. And um, our tutors, lots of our tutors are university students, and they happen to be connected to people that we aren't or that we can't be. Um, this, just for an example, this student, uh, university student who's our tutor, is um, she has parents in Oakland County. So the way our organization works, we would love to be more connected to people in Oakland County, people who might want to come to our fundraising dinner at Zingerman's, um, but we don't know them, and we don't have a connection. Well, this is our conduit, this is our person that makes that happen. Um, she may have a part-time job at a local business that we want to get to know. Um, she may be part of a student group. So we do everything we can to find these other groups that people are part of, are part of and connect up. And as a nonprofit, we are kind of in this constant process of asking. And so we're looking for feedback and input about how we're doing. And that's obviously beneficial in lots of ways because when, when a problem crops up, we can fix it. But the other benefit of that is that we get great feedback about what, what's going right. And so, and we do a lot of that in writing. We do it in emails, we do it in surveys. And so we wind up with a whole bunch of stuff like this. This is a high school teacher that we work with, and he says, um, 826 Michigan volunteers literally change my life and the lives of my students every single time you visit my classroom. You, you cannot buy that. And we didn't pay anything for it. What we did was we were ourselves. We sent our tutors into the classroom, we published some writing, and we wound up with this. Let me backtrack. We didn't just do those things. We actually asked him, how's it going? Is it okay? You know, are, are the tutors doing okay? Is there anything we could do better? And this is what we got. So this, these are kind of sometimes solicited, sometimes unsolicited um, comments about our work that we use in our communication with our donors, advertising when we do it, etc. 
here's another one. I won't make this a humongous commercial for 826 on our good stuff, I promise. Um, this is a parent who says, 826 has inspired my child. He struggled with writing at school for many years. The positive accepting attitude of volunteers has been so beneficial for this child, etc. Um, I think even better, when we talk about like the powerful people who are really involved in our work, um, this is a student named Manuel, who's 14, who says you get to be yourself and get your homework done on time, which, what's better than that, right? Um, so we, we try to key into those people, and we certainly, very genuinely, want to ask what they're up to and how, um, how we're doing. So beyond that, uh, we use alliances and social networking. This is another person who's in the room, Angela Cuyaba is our board president. And in conjunction with one of our events recently, Angela, um, without being asked, certainly, um, started putting some stuff on her Facebook page about an event of ours that she was going to, and posted the link and the way to donate. And I think it's fair to say, Angela can correct me if I'm wrong, but Angela was genuinely excited about what we were up to and was compelled to do that. This kind of stuff happens all the time for many of us. Um, it is sort of the basic way we do social media stuff. Here's a little less basic way we do that. This is our um, Twitter, and we started a project March 1st called 826140. And 140 is 440 characters on Twitter. We are an organization that writes and tells stories, especially with young people. And so we are basically creating content <laughs> for our Twitter feed. We have people write 140 character stories, usually fiction, very, 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 very short fiction. Um, and here's one that says, until she fed me that first bite, I hadn't touched a flapjack. I lost my dog and my dignity to a cascade of buttermilk and maple syrup. It's kind of just pleasant and fun. And if you got this on your Twitter, on your phone or whatever, you would probably have a super happy feeling. You can get this seven days a week. Um, and it's a little reminder of who we are and kind of the fun, offbeat stuff we do. So not every uh, impression that you have of us through social media stuff is like, hey, come to our big event, hey, donate, hey, do this. Sometimes it's content that we create. We're in a great position to do that because we create writing with young people all the time. And some of these are students, some of these are actually our volunteers. Kind of in the same vein, we are doing something for April called 3030. We're kind of into the numbers. I'm, <laughs> I'm realizing that as I give this talk. Um, 3030 is so 30 days in April, and we're publishing 30 poems on our website. So that's a reason why people who might be in poetry would check out our website every single day of April. And it gives us another chance to put other stuff on our website other than poems that people might be into. Um, here's a project we did last month that just came to us from another of our volunteers. It's called the Blog Challenge. So Laura Zeeland publishes children's books, and she um, has a blog that she has a great readership, but obviously, like anyone, would love to increase it. She said, hey, I'm going to give 50 bucks to 826 Michigan if I can get 50 comments on this thing. So she did a little blog post that talks about who we are. There was a time limit. And she said, I love 826. I'd love to give a dollar per comment up to 50. <coughs> Once she started talking about it, readers of her blog got into it. And so she got a few more people. And then she got a few more. So she had people sponsoring comments up to 400. So people giving in $50 increments, which isn't that much. Um, we wound up with 400 bucks, which is great. For an organization of our size, terrific. We also wound up with 400, as I was calling them, just total love notes. It's like 400 people went onto Laura's site, and so she got that traffic. And then it was 400 little comments about, oh, 826 is so great. It's more of that stuff that I was showing you before, like the testimonial stuff. I love 826. I used to be a tutor, but I had to move to California. I, I wish I could still do it. Or, you know, 826 has done a great thing for my child, etc. So this was a way that we really networked in with people in a cool way. The next thing on social marketing is um, Yelp. This is just an example, but we actually pay attention to this stuff. So we upload photos to Yelp, and we keep a really close eye on what is happening on the internet that is about us um, so that we can control it a little bit better and make sure that the message is the one we want to give. Um, 
actually, the last thing on the sort of wrapping up alliances and social network stuff, we know that the, just the people that we touch, which as I was saying before, we've got 5,000 or so on our mailing list, we've got 1,200 volunteers, we've got 2,000 students. We know that we can reach a level beyond that, and so we do a lot of things where we ask our donors to invite a friend to an event, that kind of reaching out one level. Um, volunteers usually don't only volunteer, they usually volunteer and they're employed somewhere, and so we work with them that way. And uh, the, the image there is a book written by Jackie Robbins, who lives here and is on our board. Jackie uh, publishes books, she's very successful. Um, when she published her last book, this one, in the summer, um, she asked us if she could do an event with us. And that was a great way to sort of pull in her network and people that were interested in children's books. And Jackie herself and, and other networks like that, it fit well enough with us that we were able to sort of co-promote and we had a big event for her, um, which realized uh, some book sales for her and then some more prospective volunteers and donors for us. So um, before we go on, I want to talk a little bit more about our store. So somebody came up to me before the presentation and asked me about Liberty Street Robots Supply and Repair. And it was, I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was sort of like, what the heck is it? Like, what, what do you guys do and why? And why is it on your slide? So um, we have a weird store. And I admit that, and I embrace it fully. Um, 826 Michigan is, I, I won't go into all of this, but we are part of a network of other writing centers called 826. The first one of those was in San Francisco. That's where we get the 826 part. That was the address of the one in San Francisco. When they opened their writing and tutoring center, they discovered that the, the place that they loved, the place they wanted to be, was zoned for retail. And so instead of just doing the tutor student thing, they had to open some kind of store. And the landlord said to the people in charge, like, why don't you just sell like cappuccino? Why don't you just do something that'll just make you a little money? And it'll, you'll just have to do it in the very front of your store, and then the rest of it can be true. And I thought about that. And I looked at the space, and the space had these like kind of wooden beams overhead, and it was sort of crusty and funny. And um, they decided to open a pirate store instead of a cappuccino store, <laughs> which is really weird, actually, when you think about it. It's weirder <laughs> if you go in it. Um, and has anybody heard of this? A pirate store in San Francisco? <coughs> the people in the front, very nice. <laughs> um, if you go to the pirate store, there actually is, it looks a little bit like this. It's um, a big tub of lard and a scoop. So um, there's also, depending on your budget, there are glass eyes and there are eye patches. So this is like stuff for pirates, really, stuff for pirates. And it just kind of was weird and funny. And what it caused people to do is to walk by and go, oh, there's a, you know, there's a dry cleaner, and there's a bookstore, and there's a stationer, and then there's a pirate store. And sort of as they're walking by, go, oh, it's a pirate store. And sort of that's what started the, the art of the double take that 826 is kind of known for. Um, the, the pirate store was an, an afterthought, and it was an obligation to the zoning, as I talked about before. It has turned out to be a tremendous moneymaker. The pirate store grosses something like a half a million dollars a year. Um, really, I like the bar and the ship in a bottle stuff. It's sort of crazy. Um, so they, they make tons of money. They um, are way more visible than the nonprofit, and instead of a red curtain that you pass between, like our place, they have the Jolly Roger skull and crossbones flag. So that's at the back of the store. And then behind it, it's tables and chairs and tutors and students doing homework, like what we do. Um, if you search, you do some sort of basic internet search, you will realize that the pirate store <coughs> is huge. There is a huge following. People get to know the nonprofit by way of the pirate store. And then it had this side benefit for us. Um, it, at least it did in San Francisco at first. Um, kids who were struggling, kids who needed help with their homework, realized that it was actually kind of cool to go to a pirate store instead of going to, you know, the after school tutoring center. So it has all these great benefits. And so we opened a robot store. There are eight stores and eight to six writing centers um, around the country. There is a superhero supply in Brooklyn. There's a space travel store in Seattle. We go on and on. You can check out our website for the rest of them. But we literally run a very weird store, and we confuse a lot of people with it. Um, but we like that. 
here's um, one of our window displays. That's a robot on ice skates, and there is a motor under him, and he's he's spinning around. That was in the winter. Um, did anybody see that? Yeah, a um, few people did. We hope that our window displays, our store itself, really create that double take thing, because not everybody has a robot ice skating in their window. Um, much less, you know, very few nonprofits who actually do writing and tutoring stuff with kids like we do would have a window display like this. We sell loose screws. If you are a robot, you might need them. We charge like five dollars for those too, which is kind of funny. It's a it's a revenue thing for us. Um, but the real thing is, if you don't know the story, if you don't know that little story that I just told, people come into our store and um, look at the loose screws and some of the other products we have. And usually, if I mean, it's you don't even have to be that bold to say to the person behind the counter. Do you, is this really a robot store? Like, I mean, there's a lot of hesitation, but it's pretty clear that there's something funny going on here. And that's our chance to really tell our story and tell about the 2,000 kids we serve and all the other stuff we do. Yes, we sell those screws and they cost $5. And most of that we keep because it doesn't really cost us $5 to put that together. But um, we also do this other thing, which is bigger and more wonderful. <clears throat> That's just more products in our store. So it is actually a store. Some people, when they hear that it's like a front, they're like, oh, it's like you don't really even sell anything. But we do. Uh, we sell all that stuff and lots more. So we're into the weirdness, great events. We do a mustache-a-thon, which we're in the middle of now. We have only about five days left. We've done it. This is our fourth year. To date, we've raised over $30,000 having guys grow mustaches. Um, Few organizations would do that. Most would do, you know, a silent auction or something. There's nothing wrong with silent auctions, but we've never really done one. I don't think we ever will. Um, it's just a different kind of thing for us. So we kind of go with the offbeat approach. Um, this is a website from a website that we maintain um, all about mustaches for the month of March. Um, in terms of like the weirdness thing, uh, we the first year we did this we had. I really was getting out there and asking tons of businesses about partnering with us on it, and nobody wanted to join me. Everybody thought, oh, you're doing a mustache contest. That's really weird. Um, and and I, I had a really hard time getting sponsors. This year, our fourth year, we have um, Yelp and Google and Arborbear Company and Concentrate Media and Salon Box are all sponsoring. So um, it takes a little persistence to just keep up with the weirdness. This is another event we did. Um, people are wearing robot costumes and dancing, and we made like a thousand dollars. It was awesome. So um, we just have to kind of stick with stick with what we are, what we truly are, and being weird is sometimes hard. Right so the bottom line is uh, use the people you know, especially those who are passionate about your work. Um, we make every connection we possibly can. We think that those connections are more valuable than um, cash or anything. And then the last thing is be yourself, which kind of goes on the weirdness thing, but um, we know that our weirdness is actually, you know, it's authenticity. It's, we're really passionate about this work, and we really are a little different than your ordinary organization or business, and so we're trying to just be ourselves, and that tends to work. So that's our address. We're right down the street. I brought brochures um, that talk about more of what we do. I would really encourage you to pop into our actual store if um, that's interesting to you, though. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. I think the takeaway for me is how you creatively use um, other marketing partners um, as advocates and you create win-win situations so that you help them market their businesses and they help you market your goals and your organization. So for me, that's one of my, my great takeaways. Um, we'd like to open this up for question and answers now. Um, and I, before we open up for questions and answers, I'm just going to ask Joel to give his experience of walking into the robot store. Okay, I've walked by the store and I happen to need a new battery for my Roomba uh, factory. <laughs> 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 I have some attachments in. Do you have batteries for a robot? And I got the whole spiel about the tutoring center. Okay. 
Yes. Did, did you get your battery? No. I'm embarrassed. We, we don't actually sell the remote battery. You have the battery stuff. Do we have some questions for Amanda? In the back here? Talk a little bit about um, sort of the split between your retail revenue and your charitable income. Okay, so the retail store covers something like 10% of our expenses. So for nonprofit, what we try to do is keep that um, retail or the administrative cost in the 10 to 15% range. So the retail store actually covers most of that for us, and the rest of it is contributions. I, I think I mentioned this before, but everything we do for kids is totally free. So we, we don't charge for any of our programs. Anybody else? Uh, you said you work within the Ypsilanti public schools. Um, what grade levels do you work in? We work with all grade levels. So our service uh, audience is 6 to 18 years old. We kind of focus on the middle school area. We have a big program at West Middle School. But it's really, it's possible for us to do stuff with the first and twelfth grade. I just want to say you forgot to mention your um, writing workshops for adults, too. We do. Have you been to some of those? I'm planning to. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, we do. Actually, we do charge for those because that's really a fundraiser for us. So when we get the chance to work with um, a writer, Jackie Robbins, who I talked about with the book project, has done one. And we're doing one in April with Doug Olin on for um, something when you're coming to. Very good. Um, when, when people are in town and we can take advantage of that. We do. It's a good way to connect up adults who might care about what we do and are interested in writing, but they can't participate in our programs because they're older than 18. So we have all of that. Anyone else? Um, our family has a lot of gear from, from your store, the robot shirts, the, the security posters. Mm -hmm. um, how do you reach out to the artists that you work with? Oh, um, in terms of the graphic design on our products, those are mostly done actually by our staff, not me. <laughs> the other part of our staff, Amy Summerton, um, who's our program director, and so she does a tremendous amount of that. We worked with a designer in Chicago who actually volunteered all of her time. She developed our logo and all the, we have like four or five product lines. So she gave us the basics for the graphics for all that stuff. And then um, Amy, our staff member, kind of takes her work initially from 2007 and, and makes new products from that. So, yeah, mostly volunteering. Hello. <coughs> Hello, I have two questions. One is, um, do you connect up with the uh, nonprofit organizations like, I came in a little late, I don't know if you said this, New or Best in Flint that are hubs for um, uh, nonprofit organizations building capacity in them? Wondered about that. And the other one is um, blogging for adults. Do you help with writing in that area? We um, do partner with New and other nonprofits um, in some ways. In terms of doing stuff for adults, this is sort of like the question here. Um, we have, I think we've once run a blogging workshop for adults. We certainly could in the future, but it would be something that we charge for. It would be a fundraiser for us. Yeah, yeah. fundraisers are good. Fundraisers are good, <laughs> indeed. Um, no, but we, I think we've only done that one other time. And I don't even know, I don't think there was tremendous interest in it, which surprised me. Talk um, to me later. Okay, we can talk later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll to find that audience. Um, anybody else? Thanks so much for having me. This is really fun. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, before we uh, pass the microphone around for introductions, just a few quick thank yous and announcements. Um, we do record Lunch and Ever Marketing on podcasts. Vince Chivalisti in the back um, does all of our recording for us. Roger has been religiously doing the video streaming for us. We have Carter Sherline who helps out with the, uh, he's our photographer for the Lunch and Ever Marketing photo shoots. We have a host of other volunteers. And it's because of these people that we're able to keep the Lunch and Arbor Marketing program going. Um, another way that people can help support 
Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing as a nonprofit organization. We do offer sponsorship of the Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing Newsletter. We have an audience of about a thousand um, where we distribute the email newsletter to. So if you're interested in supporting Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing, the educational programs that we put on, um, please see Megan Crosby when she returns from holiday or email info at la2m.org if you're interested in taking up the sponsorship of our e-newsletter. For those of you who haven't um, been around Lunch Ann Arbor Marketing for introductions, we pass the mic. This is the chance for you to introduce yourself, your goals, your organization. If you have a particular ask, we ask you to keep it short. But this is your um, your 32nd chance of fame. And I'm going to kick off here with Anita. Hi, I'm Anita LeBlanc from The Right Word. I'm a writer. I've been in business since 1992. And also provide marketing communications and graphics project management. Hi, I'm Angela Kuyapa, and as Amanda so kindly of stated, I am the president of the Board of 56 Michigan. Um, when I joined the board, I did so for the writing aspect of the organization, um, and I could never have imagined just how many times I would actually dress up like a robot in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm not wearing tinfoil and running around the streets of Ann Arbor, um, I'm the marketing director for Logic Solutions. We are um, web and mobile application experts. Hi, I'm Colby Chilko, and I work at Google, but I'm here specifically today because I volunteer with our Google Grants program, and um, that was mentioned in the presentation. So what that is is it's in-kind advertising that allows nonprofits to use the Google AdWords advertising platform, and um, this year we're really trying to ramp up and get as many Michigan nonprofits involved in that um, program as possible. Hi everyone, my name is Elise Gelfoyle and I work at Google with Colby. I also volunteer with our Google Grants program and I'm here today because Amanda told me she was going to be speaking and I've done a little bit of work with 826 and there's some familiar faces in here too so um, we're looking forward to getting to know more of you. My name is Beth Adams, I'm the director of Ann Arbor Meals on the Wheels. And in a couple weeks, we're going to be expanding our service area to include Dixboro Village. So if you know of individuals who are homebound, frail, um, are going to be having surgery and need meals for a couple of weeks, please give us a call. Um, you can email us in our meals on meals. And then for those of you who are golfers or no golfers, um, save the date for Monday, July 12th. We have our second annual Tee Up to Make a Difference at Redmond Farms. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Nathan. I'm the marketing and event coordinator for the Housing Bureau for Seniors. And um, we are a nonprofit organization, which is also a program of the University of Michigan Health Systems Community Health Services <coughs> Department. And um, our, this is Deborah McIntosh, who is my colleague. And um, we uh, put on an event every year in the spring called Senior Living and Housing Awareness Week. This is going to be the 12th annual event, and I invite you all to um, think about coming to it or telling people about it. It's a, an event for seniors and their family members to learn about all of the different housing options and um, care options, senior services and products and to make life um, easier for seniors as they age, to make it possible for seniors to be able to age in place for as long as they want to, or to find appropriate and safe, affordable housing uh, if they choose to move. And um, this, is a, this event goes for nine days. It starts with a, an expo at Washtenaw Community College on May 7th. And there will be exhibitors and workshops on that day, and then it is followed by um, May 8th through 16th, um, open houses at uh, housing communities for seniors throughout the Washington County area, as well as 17 workshops on a variety of topics that are related to seniors and aging and, and housing and finance and legal issues and um, <coughs> travel. So um, if anybody wants to know more about it, uh, we have a few brochures with us and the brochure is also on our website, www.med.umich. 
edu slash seniors. Yes. Okay, thank you. This is our first time here. We were invited by Beth Adams, who um, in, in July will be um, our new executive director. Thanks. I really enjoyed your presentation, by the way. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gina Chen. I'm a student at U of M. I am also a social media researcher and analyst, and I'm on the marketing, um, marketing director for two different local publications. Uh, one of them is Shea Magazine. It's um, the U of M uh, fashion and pop culture magazine. And we're also the second largest student fashion publication in the U.S. And so we are celebrating our 10th anniversary, and as a kind of like a special thank you to all the very welcoming members of LA2M, we'd like to invite you guys to uh, our Shea X, which is our big fashion show and the launch party of our latest issue. It'll be Sunday, 7 to 10 at the Michigan Union, and so if you're interested, just uh, come up to me later. Hi, I'm Amy Ma. Um, I do um, alternative energy and green building, but here I guess I um, would be talking to you about <clears throat> a project that I have in uh, publishing children's literature in multiple languages, and it would be a platform for international publication um, for children's books in um, many countries, including the U.S. And I guess the, the talk today is really exciting. You know, you can do something together. Yes. Hi, I'm Ben Nystrom. I haven't been here for a while. I'm glad to be back. Um, I wish the place was full. I think nonprofit uh, work is amazing. And I am now um, a vetted consultant with Best and Flint. And that is a consulting consortium. And um, I'm very busy all the time. So it's kind of a cool thing after retiring from another huge nonprofit in town. Um, what I wanted to say is uh, I do work development. I, I'm a change and transition specialist. That label was given to me by an executive director at a nonprofit in Flint. I think I'm going to use it for a while. And I'm a coach. And there is a job opening on uh, with uh, Samaritan, Samaritan Counseling is looking for an admin receptionist. I just wanted to share that little piece of news. I have tweeted it if you're on Twitter, and I'm hoping some of these referrals will go on Facebook or Twitter so I can find you guys. So I can help publicize your good stuff. And I want one of those books. I have somebody to see this afternoon. Thanks. I'm Benji Mandroch. I do advanced analytics. I turn data into information and insights. And in terms of where I go beyond just the mustache. <laughs> uh, I'm Julie Mack, and I work for the Ypsilanti Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we sell and market Washtenaw County as a whole, including Ann Arbor, Saline, Manchester, Milan, the whole shebang. And um, I just want everybody to keep in mind that if you go to a conference for uh, work or pleasure, whatever kind of is, a meeting or a conference or convention, uh, think about how we could bring that piece of business here to Washtenaw County so people are spending their dollars in our community and if you know of anything uh, coming up or you've been to a conference if you think you could bring it here uh, let me know I'd be happy to help you bring it thanks hello my name is Nathan Gregors also from the Ypsilanti Area Convention Visitors Bureau uh, I'm an intern right now and from Central Michigan University up in Mount Pleasant Michigan it's a couple hours north uh, also visit check out our website list of our web website website events at visit Ipsy ypsinow.com. Hello, I'm Peter Clay, um, Director of Business Development at Parish Advertising and Design. Just joined uh, the team a couple weeks ago. Um, if you're not familiar with Parish, we have uh, some major national clients, GM, Smart USA, uh, Mitsubishi, but also some very relevant uh, local and regional advertisers. We just launched the new brand, Hotel.com. Probably familiar with our Walsh College campaign uh, with uh, the uh, legal pad and, and uh, some pretty great ads there. Um, mainly I'm here, I want to meet people, I want to uh, uh, hopefully connect with all you guys and uh, continue coming to these events, so thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Stephanie Block and I'm the Career Center Coordinator for the Center for Independent Living, um, another nonprofit in the area. So um, I help people with a wide range of disabilities connect with employers in the area and do some career building, resume help, um, and networking skills. So. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Paul Doss. I am the president of Engetti Enterprises, which is a marketing services firm in Plymouth. And uh, after three years of self-employment, I've decided to seek full-time employment anywhere elsewhere. So if uh, anybody's aware of marketing leadership positions in the area, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks. I'm Mary Jean Robb, and uh, I wear several different hats in the community, but one I'd like to talk about for a minute this morning, or introduce myself as the president of Washington Literacy. And I really enjoyed the presentation today, and I think if it sparked any interest on anyone's part of being a tutor, uh, we do adult literacy tutoring. Uh, we're the only um, nonprofit in the area that does adult uh, literacy tutoring, and we are very much looking for new tutors. Um, we have a tutor training coming up. Visit uh, WashingtonLiteracy.org for more information. And uh, thank you very much. With, uh, I'm EIC with uh, formzine.com and today we have we have a food writer with us and also a marketing director yeah, and Jason Siegfried. Uh, we're an online fashion and culture magazine and we cover a lot of local events and fashion shows so if anyone has any events or news that they're particularly interested in getting exposed to the young adult population in the area let us know. Yep, and uh, I'm Jason Siegfried, like we said, I'm the food writer, and if you have uh, any um, like food events that you want to cover or anything related to that, uh, you can drop me a line and uh, we, we can work something out. Hi, I'm Laura Brady, the Get Down Health Program, and I'm the Community Challenge, is starting in just three weeks, so if you need any information, come and see me after. I'm Eric Jankowski. Um, I'm one of a few people helping get uh, a new nonprofit bicycle co ops right in Ann Arbor. Uh, it's called Common Cycles. And so uh, we're just learning as much as we can right now. Good afternoon. Uh, small businesses want to grow in this area. Many have questions about how to do that. I'm Randy White with growbiz.org. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, I help people with their information needs, including uh, live streaming and recording events like this. Uh, I also uh, am, do a lot of Google Earth mashups, and I'm teaching a couple courses at WCC in May and June. The main one is for uh, lay people and citizen advocates, so a lot of you nonprofits uh, may be able to use Google Earth as a tool to further your causes. The one in June is for educators and teachers to uh, learn how to use Google Earth in their coursework to help students really appreciate uh, the, you know, the subject matter. So uh, see me afterward if you're interested, or go to the WCC website. It's the continuing education portion, so it's a relatively inexpensive course. I'm Tom Crawford, and I help teach business people how to communicate more effectively. And wanted to mention that this Saturday is TEDx U of M. For those of you who are not following that or haven't registered, it's too late anyway because all the invitations have gone out. But Roger will be live streaming it, so you'll be able to catch it that way. And there will also be alternative locations in town to listen to the live stream as well, including, I think, at the Work and Tile Exchange. I think they volunteered to do that, which is just down the street. So if you haven't done that, there's going to be over a dozen absolutely amazing speakers. Uh, some and some of the best stuff going on in Ann Arbor on Saturday, so take a look at that. Hi, I'm Sally Mitchell. I'm from a company called Task Team from Plymouth, Michigan, and um, they provide uh, business solutions for startups and uh, small companies. And I'm here, this is my first time at the city, uh, uh, LA2M event, so I really enjoyed your presentation, and I look forward to more. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathy Griswold. I'm on a number of nonprofit boards, and I really appreciate the topic today because for nonprofits, marketing is really an area of transition, and nonprofit boards are made up usually of older people, and so most of them are a little concerned about social media and Twitter, all that they know they have to use it. Um, so thank you again. Hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Clark and I'm the Community Relations Coordinator for SOS Community Services. SOS is a nonprofit um, and we basically help those who are at risk or currently homeless in Washtenaw County. 
Hi, uh, my name is Jane Delancey, Delancey Design, and we provide website design and development. Um, for people who are frustrated with their current site or concerned about um, getting a site presence and using it, of course, for marketing, um, I do partner with Tom Brandt at North Tech to provide website development for churches. It's something a lot of us have had a lot of experience with. And so we have kind of a special focus for that. And I did want to make an announcement. Um, WXW, the Women's Exchange of Washtenaw, has a book club. And our next meeting is Wednesday, April 14th. The book we'll be discussing is Making Peace, Making Peace with Your Office Life. Um, and we're fortunate to have the author who lives in town be present there. It's always held at Nicholas Books at 6.30. Um, that's Women's Exchange of Washtenaw. I guess you could go to the um, website or just, but you can um, see me if you're interested or you can just show up at Nicholas on Wednesday. Hi everybody, Eric Rodriguez, Client Services Manager for Ingenix Digital Marketing. Hi, Joel Bergen, I'm an Internet Marketing Consultant, currently working on a project uh, called Dishfish. Dishfish.net, that we partner local businesses with local nonprofits to help the nonprofits raise money and create community among their supporters and bring more labor for customers to those businesses. It's in its early stages and we're looking for uh, launch partners for that. So if you have a business that would like to get more customers and help out nonprofits and get some good PR, if you have a nonprofit that is looking for creative ways to raise funds and create interest, Please come talk to me afterwards or go to dishfish.net, not .com, dishfish.net, like <laughs> fishnet. <laughs> People hold it, or squatting on the .com watch 2400 bucks for it, so that wasn't <laughs> Anyway, thanks. My name is Margaret Smith, and I'm the development director at the Huron River Watershed Council. I think my nonprofit wins the award for the longest name. Um, for those of you who had iced tea or water today, that water came from the Huron River. Ann Arbor actually sits on a river. Many people don't even know that. Um, you may not also know that it's the cleanest river in southeastern Michigan. There's two reasons for that. There's two reasons for that. The Clean Water Act and the Huron River Watershed Council being here since 1965. If you care about clean water, it's hrwc.org. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lynn Sung. Um, I'm with New Nonprofit Enterprise Network. Uh, also, a very long nonprofit name. Um, we're right at the end of Main Street. We're a nonprofit capacity builder. So basically, what we do is we provide services such as um, matching board members to uh, for organizations, training board members. A popular series is how to get board members to fundraise. Um, very, very popular series. Um, we also provide uh, the service that I direct is called MP Serve, and it's basically IT support for nonprofits who generally can't uh, afford to hire a system administrator. So the questions that my, my team gets on a daily basis are: the internet is broken. I can't print. Um, I've deleted all of my donors in my database. So, <laughs> don't ever do that. <laughs> so, we have a back so that's the work that we do. So we uh, back up all of your data. Um, we work with Merit, uh, which is a, a provider in town to um, uh, provide a lot of organizations with Zimbra, which is a web-based email. Um, I also do social media training. So I've, another popular social media uh, workshop has been how to use, how to do an online fundraiser. Um, I'm a, I'm a former executive director of a nonprofit out in DC. I've fundraised a lot online. Um, we're actually launching a series of webinars for nonprofits, like really, really basic uh, tutorials on Twitter, on Facebook, um, blogging, YouTube, and Flickr. So that should be coming out in about a month. You can check out our website, which is new.org, new.org. Um, and we, there are two other services that new provides too. There's the new center um, where Margaret is, and uh, as well as 16 other nonprofits, we provide office space. I think we have a couple spaces open. Um, we're also active in Detroit, uh, and we also help nonprofits form. So, if you're an organization that's struggling to um, with the different issues on liability issues or where to find insurance, um, how to uh, find low cost alternatives to um, you know, anything that you need to run your organization, we have a program called Resource Connect um, that includes access to uh, a database called the Foundation Directory Online, which is usually pretty expensive, but 
Um, anyone in the community is welcome to come in through the new center here in Ann Arbor or in Detroit. Um, do a really nice search to find out what are uh, good donors that would match your organization's mission. So, um, that said, I have my card if you're an organization looking for services or if you're interested in becoming more involved in our community. Um, we also are having an event this May. No, no, no. Yes, yes, this May. Um, <laughs> my iPhone. Um, this May um, on a, a called Spring to Service where we match um, uh, local folks with uh, local boards. And I think a bunch of you guys, there's a bunch of folks who came to the last event, so hopefully you can come again. Thanks. I'm Curtis Sherlock from Prince Stadiums, and I do commercial editorial and portrait photography, which means pretty much anything for whether it's portraits on the wall to advertising to uh, editorial events. Uh, and I think eccentric applies more than weird, or all except weird, and I understand for all so. <laughs> and I'm Dee Davey, Creative Ideas Marketing. I help overstretched and under-resourced marketing managers get projects off their desk. I step in and fulfill one-off marketing assignments when it does not warrant the investment of a full-time resource. I also help product development teams create and launch new service products to generate revenue. And I help marketing agencies get under the skin of their clients to help them tease out key marketing messages and identify new opportunities for marketing projects for their businesses. I'm also the voice of Lunch and Armor Marketing. I work with Derek to put the program together and to promote it. And I have pleasure in introducing next week's speaker. Um, April 14th, we have Sean Hickey from PWB Marketing. And he's going to be talking about B2B business generation. So see you next week at Lunch and Arbor Marketing. Have a great day. Thank you.